Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel here on YouTube about beer and home brewing. Today's video is sponsored by one of my patrons, Patrick Schilbo, who sent me this beer, the Juicy Brute India Pale Ale. Yeah, have a look at that label. So it's a home brewed Brute IPA. And I also have the recipe, so we're gonna try the beer, talk about Brute IPAs and go through the recipe. Cause if it's a nice one, you can try to brew it yourself. Hmm. And Juicy Brute, is that a play on the chewing gum? Patrick Schiebo, please comment down below, let us know. Guys, let's get this one into a glass. So, the Juicy Brut India Pale Ale, 7.9%, 50 centiliters, so it's quite strong and uh, yeah, that's one of the things we're going to talk about with brewing Brut, what to think about. It's uh, like a month old, so it's quite fresh. So we have the uh, my favorite opener and yes, I have links down below for that don't have link for the glass. This is my, uh, ah, it's so nice, the Dr. Hans Brewery glass. I have links for the most stuff I use for beer and brewing and yeah, also for videos. I've got a new uh, field recorder trying some different things with the sound, so experimenting with, uh, with that one as well. Uh, going to a cordless lavalier microphone. Uh, try some other stuff as well. I know you guys are here for for the beer, but yeah, I I like the, the video part of, of things. So that's the reason why I'm doing the YouTube channel. So we have to bear with me as I play with different things, like too much camera shake and so on. So guys, let's get this one into a glass. Nice looking beer, looking out for sediment. I'm gonna end it there. Okay, so what do we got here? We have a, uh, and I don't have a flashlight. I guess I do on my phone. Okay, so uh, let me have a look for myself and try to replicate it. That's the color I'm getting, which you're getting now on camera. Lovely looking beer. We got a finger white head, good level of carbonation streaming up against the glass there. We have a quite hazy beer. Talking about Brut IPAs, we're talking about champagne beers as well. It has been called champagne beers and in my head, a Brut should be clear. Maybe it's just in my head, of course. What you guys think, should a Brute IPA be clear or not? I don't want to go to if beers should be clear. Sometimes I think a clear beer is nice. And in other genres, I really want it hazy. You want your Napa's hazy and uh, yeah, so. Uh, and a little haze in a Keller beer, something like that. Yeah, it just makes it great. So it's a good looking beer, but maybe my expectation was that it should be clear. But if it were just an IPA, nice. So uh, heads dying off as we speak. Okay, so. A lot of sweetness, like jammy sweetness, and um, that could be a, a sign of uh, oxidizing, oxidized beer. It smells good though, but when beer gets oxidized, 
I do get like a jamminess, sweetness to it. Okay, so we have that strawberry like jam on the note. The sweetness, some biscuit. Okay, so uh, Patrick Kilbo, thanks for sending me the beer. If anyone else wants to send me beer mail, you will find my contact information down below. Okay. It really tastes like, like I said, strawberry jam, but it's nice. This beer shouldn't be used to brute, it should be strawberry jam. Because I'm getting strawberry jam. Apart from the strawberry jammy sweetness. It's a clean fermented beer, really nice brewed beer. I like the mouthfeel. I'm gonna look at the recipe, hope we get an FG, see how much this fermented out. What is a Brut IPA, if you are new to this? Uh, Brut IPA is an IPA where you add enzymes to the fermentation and what the enzymes do is that they break down the, the, the longer sugar chains to shorter and that means that the yeast can more easily access the sugars and you end up with a much drier beer and a much drier beer means that you will also end up with a much higher ABV beer of course as the fermentation as the yeast continues to ferment and consume the sugars and turning the sugars into alcohol and CO2. So when brewing a, a brute you have to consider that that you will get a really dry beer maybe use less malt if you don't want really strong beer and also a drier beer means that it's not as much sweetness to counterbalance up the bitterness from the hops and the Brut IPA when it's supposed to be an IPA you want to throw a lot of hops in there you have to think about how to add them when to add them add mm, all late editions of course so you don't get too much bitterness and you could even take down the temperature as well before you add the kettle hops and of course dry hop it a lot because it's an IPA, we want the hop aroma. I don't really get much other things from this beer than, like I said, strawberry jam beer. So I think really this beer is affected by uh, oxidizing. It's not a bad beer. I, I really like this beer. Talking more about the brute, we're also going to go through the recipe, I promise you that. And the recipe also goes up on my Patreon page in the beer mail section in the Dr. Hans recipe book. Well, over 100 recipes are there now, so if you're interested in yeah, checking out my Patreon, do so. I have actually never brewed a brute IPA, but I have experimented with the method, adding enzymes under fermentation for other purposes and I have recommended it for other purposes as well so I'm gonna go back to it and do a video about it and of course I need to brew a Brut IPA for my own. When I first heard of the Brut IPA it wasn't re really news to me because I have experimented with the method before as I said but not with an IPA, something like that, for other purposes. But I'm gonna do a dedicated video of that. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss anything. Cheers. The thing is, bottling, fermenting, hoppy beers is really tricky. So, I don't know if Patrick has this on keg, but maybe it might be a whole other beer on cake than this here but it's a nice beer let's go through the recipe so the Juicy Brute by Patrick Schilbo. 
he used. I'm gonna go through this recipe in kilos because I'm from Sweden, but uh, I don't have the percentage here. But I do have the OG and FG, so, so nice. This is really nice, so we're gonna have to go through that as well because it's Brut IPA. Also have some notes here from the brewer himself. So it's an 18 liter batch and it came out 7.9%. He used five kilos of pale ale malt and 500 grams of dextrin malt. And uh, looking at the color, it's not as dark as you see it, uh, but it is a little bit darker, I think, and that could have something to do with oxidizing as well, because you get darkening of the beer and uh, some pick it up like cardboard. Edit that out, doctor, please. Some pick it up as cardboard, I pick it up as strawberry jam. So, uh, have you have any uh, experience with uh, oxidized beer? How do you think they taste like? Comment down below. I have quite a few videos about oxidizing beers and ways to uh, improve on it. So. I'm gonna try to throw some cards up, but do check out the description. I'm gonna try to put some links to uh, to videos regarding oxidized beers and ways to prevent it. Where was I? Yeah, the malt bill. Five kilos of pale malt, 500 grams of dextrin malt. He used yeast nutrient, workflow, and he used 10 milliliters of ultra firm. And I guess that's the enzyme he used. In this beer he used 11 grams of mosaic at 60 minutes and 70 grams of mosaic at 5 minutes, 28 grams of amarillo at 0 minutes, 28 grams of citra at 0 minutes and 28 grams of mosaic at 0 minutes. And for dry up, 28 grams each of amarillo, citra and mosaic hops. Two packets of Safel US05. So this was mashed at 65 degrees and uh, as I read it here, he added the ultra firm, which I at this stage just think it must be the enzymes who added with the yeast. And he dried hopped when the beer hits 1020 and pushed up the temp and then he cold crashed it. And according to the numbers up here, this fermented out to 10.00. That's dry. Does it feel dry? No, maybe it has to do with the sweetness I'm talking about. Maybe it, it don't. Patrick, if you watch this, you can comment down below. Do you have this on keg as well? Did you find any difference on the keg with the bottle version? Maybe you just bottle your beers. Uh, I think this is a beer that might have been uh, oxidized. It's still a nice beer though. If you are into strawberry jam and uh, yeah, I am. I guess that's it. If you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you don't miss anything when I release a video like this one. And of course, a thumbs up really goes a long way. Here on my channel you can expect beer reviews like this one, gear reviews, I do all grain brewing videos, grain to glass videos. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try some extract this year or so, 2019, gonna do some extra brewing, I promise. Because I never really <laughs> gone down that route, really. So we're gonna try that as well, because I re literally just jumped on old grain. But uh, yeah, and I do a lot of experimental videos, just record a video on a long term experimental video so I do like stupid things so you don't have to and occasionally do some DIY build videos and uh, event videos and, and more so if that sounds interesting to you consider becoming a subscriber and if you want even more content there's also my Patreon page to check out where I try when I find the time to do more frequent updates and I put 
all of my recipe in the Dr. Hans recipe book, which is available for the patrons who want that. And the recipe for this one goes up there as well. So guys, cheers and thanks for watching. And Patrick Silbo, thanks for the beer. Hope you enjoyed my beer, which I sent to you, which you won in my, yeah, what, what did I, pre-New Year party. I'm gonna end this now because I'm starting to ramble. So let's call it there. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.